welcome to another episode of Moodleware High School's English Rules where we look at uh, what our students are studying in their English class at the moment. Uh, yes, we're in the middle of a lockdown here in Sydney uh, and there are some challenges with online learning and hopefully clips like this uh, help in overcoming some of these teaching and learning challenges. Uh, Year 12 at the moment are studying the craft of writing, Module C. Um, and I must say from the offset that uh, we are not analysing texts in the craft of writing thematically. We are not looking at the characterisation of uh, you know, the character process, the character development process. Uh, we're looking at how composers you know, effectively use their generic conventions, you know, whether it's word choice um, or you know, respective techniques in their genres. To create successful texts and um, another little secret about the craft of writing is that these composers these composers draft and draft and draft until they get it right nothing is random okay so that's what we're looking at we're looking at how composers craft their texts okay to create successful texts to create successful texts okay and then our students are to take away some of these tips and some of these techniques and utilize these techniques in their own writing. So let's look at the Prime Minister Paul Keating's speech in 1993 on Remembrance Day, November 11, 1993, uh, Funeral Service of the Unknown Soldier, a very, very effective speech. And let's look at the way it was crafted into something very, very special. Now, can I just say that uh, you know it's very, very hard. It's very, very hard with our generation of World War One veterans passing us, and um, our World War Two generation of veterans has more or less passed us also. So, how do you how do you come up with a speech that connects younger generations to this Australian idea of national duty and sacrifice? Okay, in war. So Paul Keating's speech was, you know, fantastic in the way that it really, really inspired a new generation of, or a younger generation of Australians to empathise and to connect with the war veterans and their sacrifice over wars in the last, you know, 100 years or so. So I'm not going to read all of the speech, but we're only going to look at certain parts of the speech and then have a look at the craft, the techniques, whether they are word choices or oral techniques that make this such a successful speech. What immediately grabs our attention is a special rhetorical technique called anaphora, where you repeat the beginning of the sentence for effect. And Prime Minister Keating repeats, we do not know, seven times to highlight the unknown soul's anonymity. And yet, the inclusive plural first-person pronoun, we, reinforces this idea that Australia does not have any detail about this unknown soldier. Ironically, this foreshadows just how important this anonymous fallen soldier is to the Australian psyche and identity. And the repetition of the high modality word never is absolute that we will never find out any more details about him. And what a way to finish a paragraph. You know, I really enjoy the effective use of parallelism in the second last sentence of the paragraph. His family is lost to us as he was lost to them. You know, this great sense of loss. Australia may not have any contact with his family. But his family's ultimate sacrifice to Australia was this soldier's loss, this death. Okay, and like I said earlier, okay, the first person plural of we and us draws the audience into the speech. Paul Keating wants to include us in this speech. Let's look at paragraph two. Connective words are so important to keep texts flowing. However, yet is indicative of a change that is about to happen in the speech. Yes, we have no details about this soldier, this unknown soldier, yet 
So this, this, there is this anticipation that something different will occur. The continuous or inclusive language, we and us, maintains our connection to the speech. And you'll notice the Prime Minister uses lots of the statistics in this paragraph because statistics add credibility to his speech. The vast numbers of tens and hundreds of thousands leaves us in awe. And the anaphora of one of the emphasises that this single unknown soldier was a member of Australia's sacrifice in war on a national level. Notice how the composer finishes off the paragraph with another profound parallelism. With the words all and one to emphasise, he represents not only the fallen soldiers, but all of us. All of us Australians, as his sacrifice highlights his duty and his, a duty and sacrifice for Australia and all the values Australia stands for, like freedom. So you can see from the first two paragraphs that everything has been well thought out. Nothing is random. The anaphora, the repetition, the inclusive language all work together to grab our attention and to persuade us to keep listening and to value what the Prime Minister is saying about the unknown soldier and Australia. But persuasive speech is, is not about just the clever use of techniques. The speaker wishes to persuade the audience into thinking or acting differently. So there has to be important ideas holding the speech together. So look, let's look at this paragraph where the speaker highlights the Anzac story and the Australian legend. And the high modality would surely and ever point out that the unknown soldier definitely captures both the Anzac story and the Australian legend. And other techniques such as anaphora of it is a legend reinforce this. To build up an idea, composers use lexical chains, groups of words to build it up. If this was a creative writing piece, the lexical chains would have lots of adjectives and adverbs to create this vividness in the audience's mind. But in a persuasive speech, however, the composer uses many abstract nouns like courage and mateship and spirits to clearly illustrate how the unknown soldier is representative of the Anzac and Australian image. And the repetition of the word tradition reinforces that it's these Australian ideals that Australian soldiers take to war. And the Australian soldiers are willing to uphold the values such as democracy to make the world a better place. Yes, Prime Minister Paul Keating's speech, funeral service of the unknown soldier is fantastic. But again, let me emphasize that it's a successful speech because everything works together well. Whether it's his choice of language, his oral techniques, and ideas, they all come together to create a successful text. So when writing your own persuasive text, choose an idea that you've studied in class, even from the other modules, an idea that you feel strongly towards or one that you're interested in. Think about points that reinforce this idea. Choose words, appropriate words, that build on this idea and these points. Use first-person plural pronouns like we and us to be inclusive. Use emotive or emotional words to get the audience emotionally involved. Use repetition of key points for the audience to remember. Use rhetorical questions to stimulate the audience's attention. And I'm sure there are other techniques too. But more importantly, practice writing. So that is our first clip on Module C, The Craft of Writing, where we have looked at a persuasive speech by Prime Minister Paul Keating, uh, funeral service of the unknown soldier. I hope I've made things a little bit clearer for you. Okay, please take um, the techniques and the language and all the tips that we've sort of looked at and utilise them in your own writing. Okay, so that's what Module C is all about. Taking, you know, these, these techniques that you learn from other composers and then compose your own text using these techniques and these um, word choices. Thank you for watching 
and see you soon. Oh,